So we're going to be looking at powers of 10 and exponent values. These are going to relate to the scientific notation and being able to take either larger numbers or values that are really small but have a lot of place values to them and find a way to write them in a more condensed format. Um, so to start with, let's look at what those powers mean. So if I have 10 cubed, that is saying I have 10 times 10 times 10. And the rule with that is however many uh, is there, whatever your exponent value is, is how many zeros are going to then be in that answer when you have a multiple of 10. So if I have this three times, I have three zeros in my answer. So it's going to be worth 1,000. 10 squared means 10 times 10. There are two zeros involved. So that means there are two zeros in there. Two to the one just means to, uh, anything to the first power means you just have that number once. Um, so you're generally never going to see this because if you have the number once, why do you need to write a one on the exponent as an exponent? It's holding no value. If we, if we wrote an exponential power of one, then we would basically be writing it on everything and that would just be a waste of time. So we don't do it. Then the other thing to be aware of is there is such a thing as a power of zero. We're not going to need it. So we're not going to be using it here, but it is something while I'm doing the explanation, I want to explain that it's, it is something that exists. And so to move down each one of these levels and decreasing degrees, what we're basically doing is dividing by itself. So to get from 10 cubed to 10 squared, I'm taking 10 cubed and I divide it by 10, which means one set of 10s cancel out to get down here. And then if I divide it by 10, I'm able to cancel it down here. So then when I have to the zero power to go from here to here, I have divided by 10. Well, what's any number divided by itself? It's a one. So it does not matter what your base is. Anything to the zero power simplifies or evaluates to one as a whole number because it means that base divided by itself. Now, again, we're going to continue that. Well, I'm dividing by that base to get to the next level down. We can have negative exponents. That does not mean that our value is a negative value. To get from this power of zero to the negative one, what do I do? I divide by 10. So that means this is worth one tenth. Point one. I'll write that a little zero point one. If I divide 10 off of this, that means I have one and 10. One tenth divided by a 10. Um, or one, yeah, divide. Dividing that whole thing by 10, it turns into, so 10 to the negative two power is one one hundredth or 0 0.01. So the math gods, um, we use this negative exponent to represent less than a whole amount. Okay. Um, but in their final answer, they're like, oh, I don't, I don't like a negative number. Uh, a negative on my exponent. So when we evaluate it, it's basically we're creating the reciprocal of that as a whole number. It gets flipped and then evaluated. So that's why in scientific notation, we're going to use both positive exponents and negative exponents because negative exponents are representing decimal values, decimal quantities. So if I have um, two, seven, six, zero, 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 put in my commas, there we go. So our rule with scientific notation is that we rewrite this in a way that our leading value is a number that falls in between one and 10. So we have the format is A times 10 to some power, or we can use a dot here, A 
dot 10 to some power. So we need this converted to a number that falls in between one is a whole number. So it's more than one, less than 10. So we move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places to have a one digit whole number of two. And then whatever decimal value falls in line with that, and then 10 times 10 to the how many places did we move? Seven places. So two and 76 hundredths times 10 to the seventh is equivalent to this larger value. And because this is a whole number, a positive number, our exponent is positive. If I have point. Zero 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 three six. I'm not trying to take the decimal all the way back. I'm just going to try to take it to change this very small value into a leading whole number. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven places. Oh, just happened to work out that way. And now I have a three point six. My a value is between one and 10. And it is gonna be multiplied by 10 to the, now I have moved back seven places and I need a negative on my exponent to represent that this is actually a value that's less than a whole number. This is a decimal quantity. So that then if we are given a value like nine point two seven times ten to the negative eight. Oh, let's go smaller than that. We'll go smaller. Negative five. Is this value, if I evaluated it and put it back to what it's actually going to be, is this going to be a whole number or a decimal? It's going to be a decimal, and we know that because there is a negative exponent on it, and negative exponents mean less than a whole. So to turn this and find out what this is actually worth, that means I need to move my decimal place forward five or to the left five to shrink this value down and see much, how much I actually have. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, that means I need to put four zeros in front. So point zero, 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 nine, two, seven is what this is representing. Okay, if I've got uh, one point three times 10 to the eighth. Is this a whole number or a decimal? It's gonna be a whole number, you bet, because that is a positive exponent saying that this is a whole number value. So then to convert this, I just write the one and the three, and I start here because this is where the decimal is, and I move back eight places. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it's down here, and we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros. And then I need to start popping in my commas to organize. One, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma. What my number is, this is, 130 million when it is converted to what it is worth. Okay, so some things that you know aren't written in proper scientific notation would be if I have a, and so if I go 84.63 on 10 to the third. Okay, what is wrong? with 84 and 63 hundredths times 10 to the third, based on how scientific notation needs to be structured. A hint, the issue is located at 84.
So the issue here is the format of scientific notation is that it's a times 10 to some number and a needs to fall in between a value of one and 10. It needs to be a one digit whole number. Is this a one digit whole number? No. no. So that means you need to move it over one more place. And when you move it over one more place, that means you gotta move, bump the exponent up because you had to move an extra space. So we gotta make sure that that falls in um, to the proper formatting standards. And then also we're never going to have a fractional exponent. They exist, they have meaning, but they do not have meaning in scientific notation. So we don't need to worry about them. So if we look at question number one on unit two or U2 scientific notation, it gives us uh, six different <coughs> of exponential values. Okay, so we're looking at these. We have, I'm just writing the first three as an example, and it's wanting us to compare which one's greater than or less than. Now, we might think, ooh, I look at place values, right? Well, this is a one and this is a five. So this one's got to be bigger because that's bigger. What is it? So we actually, to help us compare scientific notation values and what they actually mean, we're actually gonna look at the degree of the variable because they each have a one digit whole number, but if one had that decimal place moved eight times versus only seven, it means when I'm turning this back into what it's worth, it is a whole place value larger than that one because the decimal has moved one more time. So in determining comparing sizes, we actually just need to look at the degree on the 10 to determine which one's larger. Well, this has an eight and this one has a seven. So this one should be bigger. And then we can also verify that by moving the decimal. If I have a one and then I move the decimal back eight places, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Plug in what I have, a three, nine, eight, two, two, zero, zero, zero. That's going to give me 139,822,000 versus if I have the five and I move the decimal back six place or seven places, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero, seven, two, four, and zero, zero, zero. Look, it's a whole place value shorter. So this means this one is worth only, helps if I put the comma in the right spot, 50,000 versus 100, or 50 million versus 139 million. So because of that extra decimal move, this one is worth more. So we'd say this one's worth more. Here, I have different degrees. So my larger degree, is going to be the larger value. The next one though, my degrees are the same. Now we care about the value of the A, our leading number, which one, they do have different whole numbers. So the larger whole number is representing a larger value, okay? So you can take a minute to determine which one you think is gonna be larger on the remaining three questions. So yeah, um, so the remaining three on that had been first, second, first. And when we looked at things like this, we knew that this second term here in this example was larger because it had the larger uh, degree on the variable. So a bigger exponent. Um, how did we, how did you determine, if we look at question number three, how did you determine that the last one, um, which one was bigger on the last set of questions, the 1.2756 versus the 1.2104. The seven was larger. The hundreds place, ooh, you even use the, the, uh, the decimal value, uh, place value by saying the hundreds value because their whole number and the tenths were the same. So then you had to look at the next place value smaller, which was the hundredths. Um, and that seven is worth more than the one and, because they had 
the same degree on the variable. Wonderful. Uh, okay, so here, here's the next good challenge. We have the planets, and we're including Pluto as a planet, keeping it old school. Um, and you need to, they're, they're distance away. Um, oh, oh, their their diameter. So the size of these planets is measured using in a scientific notation format. It's written in scientific notation. So you need to put these in order from the smallest value, so the smallest planet, to the biggest planet. So you're going to need to look at the degrees on your variables and the leading value, uh, the leading terms value to decide where we start now with the teeniest, uh, where we end now with the largest. So because to help us determine what was the smallest, we had to look for the smallest degrees on the variable, right? The smallest was a six, and we have two of those being Pluto and, oh, we have three of those, Pluto, Mercury, and Mars. So then we had to then look at the value of the leading term to see, oh, Pluto had a two versus a four or a six. So that put it at as Pluto smallest. Then we had Mercury and Mars. I believe I saw that for quite a few of you. So just so that we're not getting distracted by those options anymore, I'm crossing them out. So our next setup was looking at the degree of seven, right? Seven. So what was our smallest, what was our next planet? I think I see a Venus and then Earth, a Venus and Earth, Venus, Earth, Venus. Okay, great. So we had Venus and Earth is what people were saying. And let's just verify that. So degree seven, um, we then would need to look at the leading variable degree. And we have a 1.21 versus a 1.28. That has a larger hundredths value. So it comes second after Venus. So we'll take Venus off. We'll take Earth off the list. And that leaves us with two other degree seven terms. So what were the next two planets? Did you guys say Neptune and Uranus? Neptune, Uranus, Neptune, Uranus. Okay, yeah, looks like you guys were getting that right. So the Neptune Uranus, because we have a four versus a five. So, yep. And that just leaves us two, four, six, seven. The last two between Saturn and Jupiter, they both had leading. Uh, one is a whole number and two for the tens versus four for the tens. So then now Saturn with Jupiter. Again, hopefully from your science lessons should know that that was the largest. Um, hopefully everybody, Neptune, Uranus. Okay, so there we go. Yay, we didn't have, and we didn't have to waste the time of converting those to all of their actual diameter whole number values. We just, you guys got it by prioritizing the degree and then worrying about your leading integer or your, lead, your leading number because an integer is a whole number and these are not whole numbers. Okay, great. So I forgot I wasn't recording this. So in multiplying decimals, you multiply as normal. Anything times one is that same number. And then you count the number of decimal places in your problem and make sure there are that many in the answer. We have two here and one here. So we need a total of three in the answer. But the other thing is this one had a positive number times a negative number. So I just wanted to refresh your memory on how that works. Whenever you're multiplying or dividing integers, so positive and negative numbers, if you have the same signs, so two positive numbers or two negative numbers, you get a pause. How do I spell 
positive answer. It's just like ignore the signs until you're done and then count, pay attention to the, the signs after that. If your signs are different, you're then going to have a negative answer. Different signs means I have a negative solution. Okay. So then here we have 127 thousands times 100. What is this going to look like as an answer? As we say, we multiply as normal. So I know any number times a one is that same number. So I know I have a 127 involved, but where's my decimal? How many decimal places am I going to need? Okay, we've got a range of answers there. But yes, we are going to need five because this first term has three. The second term has two for a combined total of five. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and my decimal. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, yep, it's in the correct location. So this would be the solution. And I had two positive numbers, so that's positive. Now, now we have that, what's the rule about dividing with decimals? We don't divide by a decimal. We got to take it out. So we have to move the decimal. I can't have a decimal in the number I'm trying to take out. So how do I turn that into a whole number? I need to move the decimal back one place. So now that gets to become a whole number of one. But if I move the decimal on one number, I have to move it on the other to keep my proportions the same. So now I'm at negative 92.2. Now I can ask myself, how many times can I take a one out of 92 and two tenths? Well, I can take it out 92 and two tenths of the time. Then I notice I have a negative divided by a positive, different signs means I have a negative answer, okay? So just, I, was just able to divide by moving that. And if you're not totally sure how that all works, because basically um, you could copy dot flip. Yes. So we can always multiplying by the reciprocal of a number also gets us the same answer as dividing by that original number. So if I go back to this and I had one tenth, well, I can write that as a fraction, one out of 10. So instead of negative 9.22 divided by one tenth, I can go negative 9.22 times 10. That looks more like a decimal. Let me move it up. I'll do a little X there. Times 10. Well, if I have nine, 10 times, I've got 90. So that lets me know that I, whenever we multiply by a power of 10, we're just increasing its value by one decimal place. So it's still a 92.2 negative. So you can use either method you want, multiply by the reciprocal or clear out the decimal and then do the same to the original number. So all the homework is going to do for the scientific notation is going to give you half of them have you taking the original value and rewriting it in scientific notation, and then the second half gives you scientific notation that you need to convert back to what that value actually is. So what would, uh, is it trillion? Thousand, million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. Okay. Um, what is this giant number going to look like 
in scientific notation. So we need to make sure that our leading term has a value between one and 10. So it's a one digit whole number. And then 10 to, so 10, 10, 10, 15, okay? So we know we have three, six, nine, 12, 15 spaces to get the decimal behind one, just one number. So it becomes 1.2. <coughs> <coughs> 205 times 10 to the 15th power. Yep. So we don't want to drop any of our, our numbers in between, but yes, that was 15 decimal places. So this next one might be a little harder for you to count. What do we want? At least tell me what my leading integer value should be. What's my A value when I rewrite this in scientific notation? I know what you meant, Tanner, it's all good. What leading number does this need to be? So we have a three, do, do we need 305 or where's the decimal need to be in that number? Okay, you bet. We need to move the decimal back far enough to let us have a 3.05 so that we have a one digit whole number. And how far do we have to move back to do that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight places. So what is our exponent going to be to move that way eight places? Partially, what is, let's see, there's something kind of important. There we go. It has to be a negative eight to reflect that this value is less than a whole number in its original form. Okay, excellent. So whenever the original number is less than a whole number, and we move it, it has a negative on the exponent. Whenever it is a positive whole number, uh, or not positive, just a whole number, and we move the decimal, that gets to be a positive exponent. Okay, so now we need to evaluate this. What put this back in its format? First off, is this going to be a whole number or a decimal value? When we convert this, is this a whole number or a decimal? It's a decimal because it has a negative on the exponent. So that lets us know 9.28, and we need to take away four decimal places. One, two, three, four, to put it here and fill in those blank spaces. So we're going to have six numbers all together with a decimal in front. Is this a whole number or a decimal? Excellent job, Christina. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. So when we evaluated this, this turned into a decimal. It was less than a whole. Are our exponents looking the same? No. This was a negative. Is this seven a negative? It's a whole number because the exponent is positive. So this 
is a whole number. <coughs> and we're gonna give it back seven place values. So if we have a two, two, seven, three, six, and the decimal is here, I'm gonna give it back seven decimal spots. Uh, A-OK, -okay, Jason, have a good weekend. I'll see you on Monday. I'll be there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that means we need to add three zeros and our commas. So the, oh, and a negative. So a negative 22,736,000 is what that's worth. So that's all you need to be doing in the scientific notations homework. Um, if it works for you. The other thing is, if you want, you can get a jump start on your study guide over this weekend so that you are better prepared for our in class lesson on it on Monday, where we're trying to get through the whole thing and you can better understand what you know and maybe what you're not so comfortable with, uh, so that you're ready with maybe some questions and um, just feeling super prepared. So the other thing, if you qualify, take your retake, complete your retake. Do we have any questions from there?